If we only plant the same old species of vegetables in our garden, we run the risk of falling into a rut. There are many unknown species and varieties out there to taste and try, at least unknown to our Western standardized culture. I like to venture out and seek exotic plants, which makes me experiment in the kitchen too. In this episode, I'll share how I got a late bumper crop of a chocha or Bolivian cucumber and how I decided to pickle them. You will want to try it out too. I love cucumbers. They can be temperamental crops, at times producing as if the whole world is a Greek salad, other times being finicky garden divas. It may be because of the climate or the years of domestication that left them susceptible to various diseases, but for some reason you cannot really count on them too much. They are a bit like cats of the veggie patch. At times, they will come to you unannounced and shower you with affection. Other times, they don't want to even look at you. I usually just leave them to their own devices. And I have to say, when I don't put too much pressure on the cucumbers, they produce well. When I don't coax them and intervene, other than mulching and keeping the soil moist, they produce better. You don't have to believe this. I decided to plant a chocha, the Bolivian cucumber, exactly because I wanted to find a more reliable producer that was more pest resistant and produced well without playing mind games. So I planted them in spring, at the same time I planted the cucumbers. And while the cucumbers zoomed up and produced tons of fruit, the achocha chose a slow and steady approach. During much of the summer, it just grew and grew. By the time it started to set fruit, the cucumber was dead. Cucumber doesn't like the hot and humid conditions of a Maryland summer, so they are definitely a mid to late spring crop here. A chocha, as it turns out, is really a fall crop. By the end of the season, the trickle of a chocha pods I was harvesting was turning into a tidal wave just as winter approached. It was exactly in this setting, after a light frost had nipped the upper leaves of the chocha vine, that I ventured to the cold breeze to harvest out the remaining pods to make them into something useful. I was harvesting all sizes of pods, the bigger hollow ones that I had used to make stuff to chocha during the summer months, and the immature smaller pods that would have continued to grow and produce exponentially had the climate been cold but not freezing. A chocha likes a mild cold it seems, because it comes from the Bolivian Andes, which makes me believe that it would do well grown in a subtropical climate like Florida, producing well during winter. I had allowed it to climb the towering Jerusalem artichoke stalks, and while the Jerusalem artichoke was not timid to show its exuberant growth, the chocha was not shy to cling to it, creating a mass of green a haven to many critters inhabiting its mesh of cellulose fiber decked with chloroplast photosynthesizing. These two crops knew how to pump out biomass, and they seemed perfectly suited to each other. The sheer weight of the achocha vines had caused the Jerusalem artichoke to sag. Achocha is a relative to cucumber and squash, and displays some of the same vigorous growth habits. All it needs is plenty of sun and moist, free-draining soil, and it is happy. It will cling to anything, weaving itself into a fabric due to its many tendrils. Finding the green fruit amongst the carpet of green can be a bit challenging. If you decide to grow this yourself, you will definitely miss harvesting some of the pods before they become too mature and undesirable. It is inevitable. Because the plant's death was imminent due to winter's arrival, I was being ruthless, yanking out the vines, harvesting the fruit and piling the refuse to become compost. Amongst the leaves I found a green praying mantis. This was evidence that the tangle of life was serving as home to beneficial insects that naturally help control pests. The more we can promote life within a garden, the more resilient our systems become. A few leaves below I found a praying mantis egg pouch called an uthika. It looks like a piece of styrofoam stuck to the leaves or twigs. It provides shelter during the winter to hundreds of baby praying mantis that hatch in spring to feast on garden pests. I have noticed a marked increase in praying mantis in my garden during the years. I feel like it's important to leave garden debris around the winter 
to serve as shelter to many life forms, like the praying mantis and spiders. I glean the many achochapods still stuck to this net of vines, much like a fisherman's net full of fish. I was ready to head inside, out of the cold. Coming up in the next block, I'll share with you how I made my own achocha pickle right after this commercial. Suburban Homestead is brought to you by viewers like you. Thank you. If you enjoyed the show and want to ensure more videos are produced, you can contribute on Patreon or buy art from my Etsy store. This week I'm featuring these fun, handmade plant tags with this channel's graphic style. It is a great way of decorating your windowsill herb garden and showing your support to the channel and your desire to see more of these videos. Hurry, limited offer. With harvest in hand, I went into the kitchen to come up with a way of preserving these pods. I had tried to find recipes for chocha pickles, but found little out there, so I decided to follow the same principles as in pickling cucumbers. First, I sorted out the chocha pods according to size. The larger mature fruit would not make good pickles because they are hollow inside with tough seeds. When the seeds mature, they gain a black, woody coating that is definitely inedible. The flesh also becomes more pithy and less crunchy, so I separated them to be used fresh as they are traditionally consumed. The same principle applies to cucumbers. They have to be young and immature to produce good pickles. When they ripen, their seeds become tough and their flesh softens too much. Then I went about sorting the remainder into two groups, the very small pods were solid and tender and showed the most promise to become good pickles. The intermediate ones were a gamble. I felt like they could have seed inside that was too mature. So I washed the smallest pods well to remove any traces of dirt, draining all the water. Next, I measured about a cup of pickling salt and rubbed the pods so that they would release their water starting the pickling process. Do not use iodized table salt. This step is usually done in cucumber pickles and it is supposed to render a crunchier final product. Once they were fully coated, I put the bowl into the fridge for 5 to 6 hours. To create the pickling liquid, I used apple cider vinegar, pouring a bottle into a pan. You can use white vinegar if you want a cleaner achocha taste. I added about half of a bottle of water so that I had a slightly weaker vinegar solution. It is recommended that you use a two part to one part ratio for safe pickling with vinegar. Whatever vinegar you use, it must have at least 5% acidity as well. You can also add spices to your pickle and even some sugar, but I prefer to do a simple batch this time. I prepared a spot to process the jars by laying kitchen towels on the table. After some hours, the achocha pods left in the salt will have created a brine. All this water was rendered out via osmosis from the pods themselves due to the salt. The pods will have picked up the salty taste as well. Using the proper equipment, put the clean jars to be sterilized in boiling water for a couple of minutes. Remove them from the water as you get ready to fill them, leaving them to cool on the table. When your vinegar solution starts to boil, Drop the pods inside and stir. When pickling, always use mason jars specifically designed for home canning. Other recycled jars should never be used. Also, never reuse lids as they can only seal properly once. You don't want to let them cook, so start filling the jars with the help of a wide mouth funnel, packing the pods using a spoon. It is important to leave the top half inch of the jars empty packing the pods under the shoulders of the jar. Top off the jars with the brine, leaving about half inch free. Grab your single use lids with a magnet tool from a hot water bath that is not boiling and carefully place them over the lips of the jars. Use a ring to tighten the lid, but don't over tighten. 
process the jars in boiling water for 10 minutes with at least 2 inches of water over the lids. Time will vary according to your altitude and the size of your jars, so refer to a good canning guide. After 10 minutes, you can take them out and let them rest and cool for 6 to 8 hours. Check the lids for proper seal and you can start enjoying your achocha pickles after a few weeks for months to come.